Welcome to uh, the one on one with Kyle Medupe. That's one of the clothes, they quickly take their uniform off. Because they are vulnerable. It, there is no way from the layman's point of view. Thank you very much, David. To come and do their wire fell down and they are, they are what the, the, the R, the, the, the V, in, in matter manager called the R cap from the Titika P. Became a worse cut for that than in the regular night. Good morning. One of the focal points of um, Governor Gordon of Baseki administration is to use culture and tourism to grow the economy of Edo states. And for the past two and a half years, he has appointed a very vibrant man to be at the hands of affairs, and he has been able to revamp the ministry from what it used to be to what it is now. This morning, I have with me on set the Commissioner for Arts, Culture, Tourism, and Diaspora Affairs, Honorable Oseme, Osaze Osemege Ero. Good morning, sir. Good morning. How are you? I, you see that name, I keep having issues. Um, <laughs> the compound name. <laughs> very compound, Osemege Ero. You're welcome on set, Thank sir. Thank you very much. Good morning. Now, like what I stated in the introduction, I want to know how far has your ministry fared for the past two and a half years? Oh, okay. First of all, let me thank you. Um, thank you sir. You know, for doing a very good job. You know, I always, um, I've been here for more than four or five times. So, yeah. you know, anytime I come, I see new innovations and, you know, more stuff here. I want to thank you for what you're doing and oh, making your own sir. contribution to the state government. Because when the governor said he was going to create 200,000 jobs, he didn't say he was going to employ them in the ministry. Yeah. He said he was going to create an enabling environment, you know, for entrepreneurs yeah. and businessmen like yourself to strive. And I'm glad you're, you're one of them. So I want to say a very big thank you and well done for doing that. Yes, uh, coming home, you know, I'm glad that, um, you know, I think when I just resumed, I came here for an interview yes, as well, yes. you know, looking at how to uh, propel our, or navigate, you know, the, the ministry that uh, was given to me as Ministry of Art, Culture, Tourism and Diaspora Affairs. Yes, I'm glad that we've been able to do, you know, do a lot or a little within short time. And um, our focus then was to reawakening our culture. That was the main objective. Edo State is richly blessed with a lot of cultural heritage that is second to none in the world. And I'm very proud to say that everywhere I go. So our focus then was that there was a lost glory of our culture. So our main objective was to reawaken that culture that God has blessed us with. And I'm glad two and a half years down the line, you know, we can say that we've done a lot in that um, aspect. The sensitization, the awakening, the culture, the sensitivity and everything is... Uh, it's enormous now, you know, so I'm sure the reason why I'm here is because what we're going to be hosting next week, yeah. National Festival for Arts and Culture, which yeah. is everywhere all over the world, because the focus now on culture and tourism is Edo State. Mm -hmm. You know, people are looking forward to that. You know, we started, you know, from small, you know, reaching out to individuals that have been in that business for a long time. We reached out to communities, traditional leaders, and people that we know that have done a lot, you know, within their own right to support you know, to promote and propagate our culture. So we read that and everybody embraced us and they've been very supportive. And, and you can see the result for today. Okay. Again, you know the governor, three years ago when he was choosing the areas of his focus, okay. you know, he carefully chose six thematic pillars of his government that he was going to focus on. Environment, health, education, and of course, culture and tourism was one of them. So with what we have achieving, achieving today, we must appreciate and thank His Excellency Godwin Inouye of Baseki because he believes in culture and tourism and gives him much more support okay. you know, for what we're doing. And that's what, what was, we're getting results. Okay. Again, we have um, the most revered monarch in the world, His Royal Majesty Yamanobanedo Ukua Polopolo by Ewari the Second Nogiriga, Oba Atope, you know, who have been very supportive, you know, told me you know, anytime I want to see him, anything I need, the palazzo is open for me 24 hours. And I've enjoyed that privilege, you know, to see the Omo, Omonoba and get counsel, get support, get advice and, you know, all the support that I need. So I'm, I'm not surprised that we are where we are today in terms of where the ministry or where our culture was years ago and to where we are now. Okay. If that answers your question. Oh, oh fine. You see, I, I actually grew up in the States. Yes. 
I mean, not indigent. Okay. From Delta State, yeah. Delta State, okay, Delta State now. As the day when I was in, when I was schooling in my primary school, I have my primary school education in Edo State. I attended a school where it's compulsory for you to learn okay. Edo language. Yeah. Because culture is defined as a way on, on life of a people. Mm -hmm. Now, compulsory for you to learn, I can speak Benin fluently. Very good. Maybe after this event, uh, after this show, I will <laughs> speak Benin so you know. I learned, actually learned the basic of Benin, Edo language, in my primary school education. But it's not so today. I have a child attend schooling in Edo states, mm. but he can't speak Benin language. Yeah. Well, um, you see, first of all, you should, we should learn that times have changed. Okay. Yes, I would have loved for everybody to be speaking Benin, but it's not possible. You know, when we were growing up, we didn't have, you know, only few houses have um, landline telephone in their houses, mm -hmm. because that was the time then. Mm -hmm. A child that was, not, that was not born, a child that is born more than 25 years ago, I mean less than 25 years ago, we don't even understand, cannot comprehend that, mm -hmm. that we don't have this modern day technology. Mm -hmm. So the cell phone, everybody has a cell phone, kids in primary school have a cell phone, because it's a necessity, you know, to communicate. You know, so things are changing. And I keep telling people, yes, even when I went to London, they were telling me, oh, how come the kids don't speak their language? What do we need to? I said, we can only push. But we must understand that the reality of life, things are changed. You know, and things will continue to change. Okay, which means that... the only constant in life is change. Which means that as things are changing, yes. we are going to be losing our cultural well, values. No, not that. Okay. It's, it's sad that it's happening, but that's the truth. Okay. In 20 years' time, I'm sure we'll have this conversation where we'll sit down more gray hair and all that. It's going to be different from what we have now. You know, because that's the basic truth. What we need to do is to encourage it. You know, and doing that, the governor, you know, when he could resume office, you know, had a committee of professors, lecturers from University of Benin, um, um, Ekuma, Benin State, uh, State University, and uh, UI, brought them together, about 12 of them, and said they need to do research, they need to work on how to bring back, you know, encourage, uh, you know, our dialects. So and they did that. So when we resume, he gave us the, um, the, the, sub, the submission of the, of the committee, you know, to myself and the commission, my colleague, the commissioner for education, and see how we can put it in school curriculum. And they'll be working on that. Again, we decided to inaugurate culture clubs in schools as well, where we encourage them to speak their dialects, regardless of where they come from, mm -hmm. and know more about our culture, because that culture is our way of life. Culture mm -hmm. is our, you know, our identity, our integrity, and all that. So that, you know, if you, have, if you know our culture, you know that you need to, have that discipline and respect, you know, for elders. So we worked on that. But, to, you know, it's sad that our children does not speak our language. But from, <laughs> I mean, now, I, let me, let me bring you into this. Now, I had an experience one day. I was uh, having a drive with my son around Benin. Mm -hmm. We saw a, a Benin chief dressed in his full regalia, you know. Yeah. And I said, he said, Daddy, who is that guy? Uh, I said, he's a chief. He said, okay, he serves or he's serving the local. Okay. Because to him, if you, if you are dressed that right. way, you are, um, you are serving um, a local. Yeah. That's how much these guys, they learn in their school as far yes. as history is concerned. Yeah. So the question I'm going to put to you is this. Yeah. What has happened to history as far as our curriculum is concerned? What is your ministry doing mm. to ensure that this thing, the way we are pushing mathematics, the way we are pushing English language, how, what are we doing as far as history and Edo language is concerned? We have, um, we can only collaborate with the Ministry of Education because that's the ministry that handles everything about education, schooling, curriculum, and all that. You know, but in our own aspect, we discuss that, you know, how we need to teach our culture. And again, like I said, we inaugurated culture clubs in all secondary schools across the states last year, you know, just to encourage our Secondary, what about some no, primary we school? We need, because we, we, get, we, we, we need, need to catch them young. We need to start from somewhere. Okay. Because we did that. And there's culture clubs in secondary schools now, but working just like you have social club, dramatic club, and all that. You know, and again, if you notice, severally, we, schools have embraced our culture. Where they, every, day, every time they have their culture, their celebration in schools, primary schools and secondary schools. And I'll make it a point of duty to attend when, if I'm available, if I'm not attend, either the permanent secretary or the directors to be there so that they know that this ministry's uh, presence is always there. The only thing that we can do is just to keep on encouraging them because we can't force it. We can't, times have changed, to be honest. Yeah, people might say, why is the commissioner culture talking like this? But is it truth? You know, you can only tell them this is necessary. This is what we need to know. You know, I have kids. My kids are in London. They probably lived there before and they're coming back home and... I try my best to teach them language. But when they teach at home and go back, it's a different thing. So 
I only tell them it's necessary for you to learn. It's need for you to learn. In case you come back home, you're not lost or you can't communicate with you. You know, but man, times have changed, bro. So it's just the truth. You know, it's, but we, as a government, we need to preserve that. We need to protect, uh, preserve and propagate our culture. That's our responsibility. That's our objective, you know. And we just need to keep on doing what we're doing and encourage individuals and corporate organizations that are ready to support us on that. You have these Edo uh, Heritage, um, um, Edo Heritage uh, Club, you know, that have been pushing that. Every summer they organize. Um, some uh, schooling just to teach Edo language at the Ogba Zoo. We've supported that this, they did the third edition this year. Okay. And we just tell them every year we'll keep on supporting them. Sponsors have, you know, begin to come in, you know, aided by uh, squadron leader Ihile, who's doing a lot with his team, to make sure during summer school the children come there for about two week period oh. to learn Edo language, That's learn Edo and bring some older teachers and young ones to tell them this is what our culture is all about and language is all about and the reason and in, you know why they need to learn it. Okay, that, that, that's fine. Now, the question I want to ask you, if um, going through the Edo language or Edo history, you describe that there are a lot of history as far as, as very great history as far as Edo is concerned. So when you go through the history book and you see what has happened in Benin, things about Benin City, that's quite exciting. But mm -hmm. the question is this, why is it not attractive enough or why is it not okay, packaged enough to attract tourists into the state? Into state Growing yeah. up, I used to see white men coming to this state with their cameras. They want to take pictures of the modes, they want to take pictures of the, uh, the statues we have in Benin. What has happened to all that? <laughs> Again, I think it's the timing. I and mean, we've neglected our culture for so long. You know, maybe we didn't look at the value of, of our culture. Like you rightly said, the Edo state is richly blessed, you Rich. know, with a lot of cultural heritage. You know, that is second to none in the world, I say it. Yeah. You know, but now things are changing. You know, and I said the governor believes so much in cultural and tourism. That's why he made it one of the six thematic pillars of his government. We have the monarch now, His Royal Majesty, Amano Banedo, who is doing a lot to revive our culture, who is talk, you know, talking about um, our languages and all that. And of course, the ministry, you know, in my own capacity as a commissioner, doing all we can to promote, propagate our culture. So the thing is that this is the time. Things are changing now. Because people don't, you know, it's, it's how you sell your thing that, you, you know, that people appreciate it. It's the name that you give to a dog, the ABS. So maybe before now, attention has not been given to that area, you know. But now you can see that things have changed. In Edo, for example, you know, we have a lot of things to, testify, to testify to that. So I think we will get there. You know, and uh, we're already there. We are getting there already because, you know, look at the, the things that we've done, reviving our festivals and all that. You know, talking about the Edo Fest that we did in 2017, the Edo Festival that we did in 2018. And this year, again, we are hosting for the first time ever in 40 years and the 32nd edition of a national festival of art and culture in Benin City. Mm -hmm. You know, so I think we're getting there. Because now, what we're doing now is, whoever government, because our governor, His Excellency Governor Yasuo Basaki, believes in the future. And he says anything we're doing now, we're building an institution, rather than just having eight years and leave. Mm -hmm. So he's working on making sure that this foundation is solidly laid for, you know, his predecessor to take over from him and have something to work on. So most of when he tells us, do this, it's not just, okay, don't make it look as if by the time you are no longer there, you know, everybody, everything that you did is eroded, okay. you know. So I think with that, that, there's hope. There's much hope to say that the future is going to be brighter than it. Now, let me bring in this question. You, I, you actually said it, that this is not the first time you're coming on set with me yeah. for an interview like this. I think the last time you were here, you gave us an insight into the Sakumba Sakumba Resort. Resort yes. Now, what, how, what, how far have you felt with that project? Because the, the blueprint you gave to us, it was quite laudable. It's something <laughs> that will attract a lot of invest, um, investors <laughs> and tourists into the state. Yeah. How far have you gone with that project? The Sakumba Resort, beautiful water. You know, less than uh, an hour, 45 minutes drive from here. But don't forget, it's still in the bush. So we did a publication. We did a lot of advertisement. A lot of publicity was done. And we actually attracted about three investors who indicated interest and came with a proposal. And two actually did a presentation to the governor and said, this is their interest. You know, but the governor told them that, yes, we need, they need to come back to us because the area needed to survey because they have community issues with the land oh. around that area. 
and it's still very much in the forest. So the governor said he will want, instead of dumping them there into those crises, he wants us to have a roadmap and a master plan for tourism, which we are developing now, so that when they come back, everything will be ready. We all know the land that is meant for them, you know, before they can invest there. Because it's not just uh, small money. They're looking at huge, huge um, investment in that area. So it's still ongoing. So by the time we have our tourism master plan well developed, I'm sure we'll get there. Now, let's move straight to the thing, uh, the thing that is making wave <laughs> as far as the, uh, as far as culture is concerned now. Okay. The, the issue of um, NAFEST yes. coming into Edo. Yes. You were able to successfully host uh, Edo Fest 2017, Edo Fest 2018. Now, this is 2019. We're talking about one. National Festival of Arts and Culture. Now, let's go back to 2017, go back to 2018. Okay. So far, the gains you were able to achieve then, mm. how far were you able to use it to grow arts and culture in the States? Yeah. You know, the festival, first of all, the festival, when, people, when you talk about tourism, talk about countries that, um, you know, invest in tourism, that, society, that survive on tourism, have their internal, internal generated revenue strictly on tourism, countries like Egypt, you know, uh, Kenya, Kenya, for example, yeah. close home here, you know, Brazil, UK, America, Dubai, that I love Nigerians, Russia, to, they don't have the natural resources that, uh, that um, the country, our country have. So when we came about, look at it, look at diversify, you know, the economy of the state, of the country. We're looking at the different direction rather than just laying on the, on the oil alone. So we looked at tourism as a major tool, you know, for development. And it does state again, like I said, it's richly blessed. Because the white man or the visitor does not want to come here to look at your skyscrapers or beautiful structures. They want to come and look at your history. You know, like you said, we have a lot of history that's, that's been untold to date. So they want to look at your history, they want to look at your heritage places, they want to look at your, what you have that will be attractive to them, they don't have over there. And that's what we have in Edo, the heritage the history. You see there's a lot of family houses, traditional homes that we're trying to revive now. There's, um, you know, the tourist sites that we're trying to revive as well. You know, when we did the Edo Fest in 2017, you know, it was on a small scale because that was testing the waters. You know, we said we must do it anyway. So, and it was good. And the governor and everybody saw the, you know, the benefit of it. Because bringing visitors into Edo, you're not just looking at um, showing your culture and all that. There's a value chain benefit to that effect mm -hmm. where people will come, stay in the hotels, the people in transportation, the people, small, medium, entrepreneurs. Mm -hmm selling pure waters and all that. And even somebody like yourself into media, yeah. there's a lot of things for you to cover as well. So there's a value chain benefit that we're looking at. And upon all this, when you bring all this people into the state, the reason I was talking about tourism or tourists going to a country is that when you go to, a, for, just for example, for, you know, when you go to Lagos for now to spend a week, you, you're not going to hold anything less than 100 or 200,000 naira because you're going to stay in the hotel and the guys in the hospitality business will benefit. You, of course you will feed, yeah. and you take transportation, you buy, you know, do a lot of things. So by the time you're coming back to Benin after a week, the 200,000 will probably be 10,000 euro yeah. if, you, if you're lucky to have, <laughs> if you are very, very conservative. So that money stays in the economy, and that is how you boost the economy yeah. of a state. So when they involve, invite tourists, or they make their country or their state attractive for tourists to come, they're not saying bring the cash. You're bringing that. <laughs> the value chain, the people that are going to benefit from you is huge. So everybody benefit from it. And with that, we're able to you know, sustain the job that we have created, mm. i.e. in the hospitality business. Because the hotel has to collect the money. That money, they are going to use it to maintain their hotel, pay their staff, yeah. <laughs> keep the business running. Okay. You know, the transporters will collect the money from you. They are going to feed from it, take off their family, buy their fuel and all that. So that's why I said the value chain. They're the poor people, the common people selling pure water on the street. You know, we benefit as well. You know, so when they have, the more visitors you have coming constantly, uh, you know, the better for the economy and better for the country or the state. So that is why it's very good that we attract, you know, festivity, we attract, you know, uh, you know create um, events that will bring in people and make them happy. And don't get me wrong again, even security, I know you're going to ask that question yeah. as well. Because those times, the people will be busy, they don't, they don't have any crime. Last two years when I came on board, I met the, the chairman of... Um, Calabar uh, Festival, Festival yeah. uh, my friend uh, Gabe Ona, and I asked him, you've done Calabar Festival for the past 12 years or so. How did you survive that? How come there's no crime, you know, during that period? 
And he said, my brother, during the time everybody is busy, enjoying themselves. The boys are busy enjoying mm -hmm. the festival while the visitors are enjoying themselves. So they've never recorded any crime. <coughs> Excuse me. So that's the same thing with you know, the first Edo Fest that we did in 2017 when Ring Road was occupied by Guinness. So I decided to take it down to Oba Hill, Rama Park. And people were scared. Oh, that side of the town is too, fair, is too, you know, the crime rate is high. How are you going to survive that? People are going to ask, but that's been in. And we went there, we called all the youths in the area, sat down with them, have a drink with them, gave them t-shirts and face cap. And I told them, this is what we want to do here for the next five days. People said you are bad, but you need to prove to them that you're not bad, that you're good guys. You know, we had a walk, a road shoot together, and they were happy. Amen. And we spent one week, I st we stayed there till 1 a.m., 2 a.m., drive down to JRA where we, you know, sleep and all that. And there was no crime, no fight. So it is how you engage people. You know, and because of that, I have to extend, you know, Edo Fest from, the, I think we normally had it from 17 to 22nd. Mm -hmm. So we have to extend it till the 2nd of January. Even where I was not around, but I was monitoring them and they were happy. Yeah, they were. So <laughs> there was no crime. You know, not even a fight, not, nothing. So, I mean, it shows that these guys, they want, they're looking forward to, it, to events. 2018 was far bigger and better than what we did in 2017. And we're in 2019. I'm very happy that we have that consistency because people ask questions in 2017. Oh, we've never done Edo Fest in this magnitude for, you know, so many years. How are you going to sustain it? I said, well, just make people believe in it. The first Edo Fest we did in 2017 was sponsorship, strictly sponsorship. We were able to raise a few millions of naira that we spent. There was no government one naira in it. But in 2018, the governor supported us as well because this government believes in sponsorship. Because every organization, you know, corporate organizations, must live up with their CSR, yeah. corporate social responsibilities. Yeah. So once you are in a government, you are in a state or a country, and the government creates an enabling environment for you to strive to do your business, you should give back to the government, to, to the society. So we believe in that. I'm glad that you know a lot of people jump into it. So 2018, we had more sponsors. Sponsors like Alco Insurance was there, and a few other ones supported us. You know, and 2018 again. I mean, 2019, we're here now. First, which of course is a bigger one. I was, I was also come to that now. Yes. You discover that Edo State, when they come to the states, the money back states, Edo State is not among the money back states. Mm -hmm. How were you able to pull and take Nafes? Lagos is there, Aqua Bob is there, uh, Delta, even our neighbor, Delta State, that have the money, the cash to spend. <laughs> Rivers is there. How were you able to do that? Okay, well, you know what, Julia, yeah. last year when we were in Rivers, last year, Potako, River yeah. State hosted yeah. the last edition. And while we were there, the governor of River State, his Excellency Nelson uh, Wiki okay. actually said he pleaded with um, you know the DG Otumba Rosa where that he wants to host Nafest again, 2019. You know he said he never he never knew the he didn't know the value the um, he didn't really appreciate um, the importance of having that event. That as bad as as bad as Potakot is, that there was no single fight, no crime rate at that period. You know so. We look at um, the value of um, coming together of event. The only other thing that you can compare to this is sports. You know, so the governor of Enugu State was there. The governor of Abia State was there. In fact, we had about four governors seated. You know, they were lobbying for it. So I had to speak to the DG and said, Sir, we, I don't need this. He said, are you, are you sure? I said, yes. He said, okay, if you get a letter from the governor, I will do that. I called the governor. I think he, he didn't pick. It was in a meeting. I have to call the Deputy Governor, His uh, Excellency Right Honorable Philip, Conrad Philip Shaibu, great guy. You know, and Philip said, what do you want? He said, I said, sir, I'm in Potakot, I can't get hold of the Governor. And Nafes, we want to host Nafes next year. He said, ah, are you guys ready? I said, yes, sir, we're ready, we can't do it. Are you sure? I said, yes. He said, okay, let me talk to Otumba. Now I spoke to DG and said, well, I do we host it. Otumba said, I need to get a letter. He said, this is the Deputy Governor talking to you. We're ready, we, we, oh. we'll brief the Governor. You know, and my friend was there as well, uh, um, Honorable Bede Yama, okay. who, who was, and now, still now, the chairman as committee on um, culture and tourism okay. in the Federal House of Rep. So he was seated there and said, Bede, you are from Edo, we need, to, we need this. You need to put him out. He said, Edo, are you sure you can? I said, yes, we can. So he called DJ, said, oh, my state will host it next oh. year. Oh. <laughs> so, you know, Tumba now succumbed and said, okay. When they were announcing, now said the next hosting state is... Uh, 
Edo. Edo State. They say, oh, the governor is not here. He said, no, the commissioner is. I said, the commissioner is here. <laughs> <laughs> the governor sent me to represent him. Yeah. So that was how they handed over the gong to yeah. us for 2019. So when I came back, I went to brief His Excellency. He was pleased. You know, he said, oh, yes, that's good. We will do one. it. It's a huge one. It's a it's good one true, because yeah. the governor knows the value of having an event. He knows the value of uh, hosting um, is the event of this magnitude that the 35 states on Abuja plus other neighboring countries will be coming into Edo for that one week period. Well, and and we, we, our cameras went to town, we discovered that Edo's, they are quite conscious of the fact that something big is happening. Yeah. Everybody's ready. I'm happy. Even we are ready. Yes. The question I want to ask is this Is the Ministry of Arts, Culture, Tourism, and Diaspora Affairs ready to host <laughs> Nigeria <laughs> and the rest of the world? No, it's the state that is hosting, it's not me. I'm, okay. not, I'm not just driving through the okay. ministry. It's the so, governor okay. that is hosting. Okay, it's the governor that is hosting. I'm sure you didn't, your, it is, it didn't see any of my picture. No, anyway. but through your ministry. So, are you ready? Uh, is the state ready to host Nigeria and the rest of the okay, world? We're ready. 100% ready. Ready. I'm, ha I'm very ready. I'm happy that this, the, I mean, like I said, you know, the greatest joy, the strength in me is that uh, when I see the accommodation from, you know, common people on the street, you know, top people all over the world to say, well done for what you guys are doing, reawakening our culture, propagating a door out there, putting a door, you know, where is the position is supposed to be? It just gladdens my heart. It's not my thing, it's our thing. You know, so everybody is going to put in their own best to make sure, you know, we'll have a very successful and good uh, event. Security. Oh, fantastic. No worries. You know, security, mm -hmm. yes, there's one or two itches here and there, kidnapping, arm robbery, and all. it happens everywhere. There's security challenges all over the world. Even the advanced countries that we live in, America, London, and other, security problems. So you can't say because of, you know, issues like that, you will just ride your head and nothing will happen. Don't live your life. Yes, it's sad what is happening. You know, like I keep saying, you know, what happened in America, you know, every time is, is sad. Where somebody will carry a gun and kill 50, 500 people, innocent you people. You can't have that. That's worse. You know, so thank God we don't have that kind of situation here. Mm -hmm. So what we have here is one or two issues of kidnapping and order, which the governor is on top of it. He holds security meeting every time with the top security agents. Yes. Because security issues is not where you come to tell you to talk about or to media and all that. You just see it manifested. We all know how bad it was you know, four, five, six years ago, or even few, three, less than four years ago, when we can, once it's so close, the town is shut down. You know, none of us, nobody comes out. And when you sleep in your house, you sleep with one eye open. You know, but now, you know, it's not as bad as it used to be. I drive 10 o'clock in the night, 1 a.m., anytime I finish, I go home. Thank God nothing has happened, because first of all, you leave everything for God. And again, when you have a government that knows what it's doing, you have a governor that is very focused. You know, where security is not checked, We've had a series of meetings, we have the subcommittee for security where you have the commissioner of police, the CSO to the governor, the civil defense, and every other security agencies are part of it. And they are on top of it. Because what I told them is that I don't want a situation where we have police, police everywhere. No. Yeah. I want people to come to come Benin and have fun and be free. You know, not just seeing police and soldiers and everything. No. Let them have fun. But they will, they will, be, they will be in mufti in case anybody makes any noise or anything. They'll pick them like fly. That's what we did in 2017 at, uh, mm. you know, in um, Rama Park. There were a lot of security men on ground, and there's still going to be a lot of them, including the soldiers. You know, but I don't want—I want it to be event-free. I want everybody to have fun. I don't want to see uniform men everywhere. Because when we travel abroad or go for holidays, you don't see policemen. That doesn't mean they are not there. Oh, yeah. So security won't be a problem. If anybody decides to come out and make cause a problem, they will be picked up. Seriously, and dealt with squarely. And before we uh, make you say your parting words, we're going to ask this question, very critical one. Your ministry is in charge of diaspora affairs. Diaspora affairs. <laughs> so apart from joining a dose in diaspora to organize a do day mm -hmm. in Italy, in the US, what is your ministry doing? These guys, they have the money to invest. Mm. Mm. They have the money to invest. In other states, we see them do have investments. Mm -hmm. So what is your ministry doing to bring in these uh, those in diaspora to come into the state to invest to grow the economy of the state? First of all, Kewa, the thing is you need to build that trust. You know, these guys are dead. They didn't believe in it. If they don't believe in it, they can't bring their money. But in the last few years now, I'm sure we get into, you know, we're getting there because they're not believing in this government. They now know that the governor is very proposal, very is a visionary governor. You can see what he's doing at the best program the laying a foundation for our children in primary school, you know, 
with the Edo Best program that everybody all over the world now is coming to copy. I don't know if you got the clip of um, Lagos State, Lagos State governor talking State. about it. That was Obaseki's model. You know, we've had visitors from uh, Syria alone. We've Finland. had visitors from... You know, everybody is coming to say, how did you do it? Because the governor said, I want to lay the foundation. I want to support these kids so that we'll have a better tomorrow. Some of us here are here now in this position and talking and do what we're doing because of the education we had on our background. And if you don't get it right when you're small, you lost it. So that's what the governor is doing. So Edo Best Program, and when we went to London, you know, there was a, you know, uh, Edo Day that we went to London, the governor was there. Then and then people stood up and said, sir, we believe in what you're doing. We want to contribute. We want to send you money. The same thing in America. The same thing in Europe. So first of all, there's a relationship. And there's a trust, you know, of this governor. So and they are ready. So what the governor said, no, I can't take your money. Let's come back home, have a proper channel that the money will be funded, transparent and uh, you know, a transparent channel that the money will come to that everybody can see, and those money will be used and spent for those purposes. First of all, is the basic is the children. It cost him about forty dollars to train one child at the Edo Best program. So looking at all those things and see how we can, you know, let you know take out the foundation now for the future to, to, to make our future better. So those are areas he's looking at. Yes, my so my resp my responsibility as commissioner for diaspora is not is it, of course a link with everybody that does in diaspora, but it's more of um, you know creating and building that relationship, building and having that trust from between the door people and uh, you know diaspora and the government back home here. Yes. And um, I think we've done well in that as well because our brothers and sisters in diaspora they are more concerned about home. They even have more information than us here. Most of us. Yes. You know, anything happens here, they know first. Sometimes I get a call from Canada and say, oh, I heard what happened here. So, so, so I said, no, I have not heard. You know, unless it's government, then I need to explain to them. And it's something that passed through the ESCO, so I need to enlighten them and say, this is what actually happened. Now, your parting word, now first, mm. 21st, so you're going to tell our viewers now, the program of events okay. for NAFEST and how they can be part of that. Okay. okay. Our viewers, can we have directed me? <laughs> <laughs> well, um... 19 to 26th, we expect our guests to come into Edo, beginning on the 19th and 20th. Okay. That will be time of arrival and uh, accreditation and uh, assigning them to various hotels they are going to stay. And again, Kewe, the 20th is the third year anniversary of His Royal Majesty, wow. Amonoban Edo. So we all be at the Palace of His Royal Majesty to celebrate with him. We pay homage to him and there will be refreshment in the palace there. Yeah. So I'm using the opportunity to invite everybody to come to the palace and celebrate our most revered monarch, Oba Alpine. So on the 21st, it will be the opening ceremony. Uh, and unfortunately, the Ogbe Stadium is not going to be ready by then. So we'll be using the main ball of the sports, ball sports, festival, uh, sport, sports complex in, uh, in Unibet. Yeah, yeah. So we'll have our opening speech there. we have um, Two-Face, Dibia, you know, we'll be there performing live. What time? Um, from 10 o'clock in the morning. Okay. So we have Salvito Rifle, you know, coming to perform live as well. We have um, uh, Bolivia from Edo North oh. and uh, Wadada from Edo Central. Then uh, we have some good package that we've put together. Again, I'm working on something now. I don't know if you saw the video that went viral of the Nigerian I mean, Nigerian guy that performed in Edinburgh in Scotland. Yeah, they, you saw it? Yeah. I'm bringing it. Wow. <laughs> So they are coming live to perform here. The governor has graciously approved, you know, for them to come. And the chief of army staff, I must thank him. And my friend, the commandant of uh, supply and uh, s and in Ubawa, who facilitated that uh, process for us. So we're still working on that and looking at ways to bring them. And this is something that has never happened before. Yeah. I saw, we saw good things and we said, no, it must happen in our time and bring them back home. So there's a lot of activities on the 21st. So that will be the opening ceremony. Few speeches and here and there. Of course, the governor will now declare the event open. Then on the 22nd, I don't know if you have time to visit Obakenswa Cultural Center. There's total revamping of that place, turning into a modern um, event center. I'm happy that we did that as well. So that will be the festival village where all the competitive and non competitive events will take place. So on the 22nd, we will be there throughout. Then on the 23rd, we have the, yeah, of course, events which uh, take place at the event, um, cultural center as well. And uh, in the evening, we have um, um, a Motan. No, a Mot uh, yeah, we have a Motan, um, the history, you know, a Motan. The, yeah. uh -huh. the history will be act on drama on the stage as mm -hmm. well. Stage play. Stage play. So then the 24th is um, the Royal Splendor. 
you know, then again, we did cho carefully chose that day to celebrate Alba. This year's theme is our royalty, our pride. That's the theme of this year's event. Mm -hmm. So we're using that day to celebrate Alba. So all the guests, everybody that is already on ground, will be in the palace of His Royal Majesty. We will pay him homage. We will entertain him with different country uh, states. Um, best cultural performances then um, that's on the 24th that's royal splendor then on the 25th the first lady your excellency betsy or baseki will be hosting the children you know that visitors that are around from the 36 states here in benin all the to refreshment then in the evening we'll have a great a drama of a uh, motor and again at the cultural center then 26th you know we'll join the curtain because every good thing must come to an end we'll have a royal um uh, golf tournament at the Bini Club, yes. So His Majesty, His Royal Majesty, the Oba of Bini is coming to tee off, you know, the um, golf uh, tournament for us, which is huge, which is good. So then in the evening, in the afternoon, we'll go back to Sports Complex for the closing ceremony. Mm -hmm. We'll have different events. Then we're partnering with um, a tax force on that human trafficking. Mm -hmm. So in the evening of that day, we'll have um, a concert at... Uh, Museum Grand, where we have Mayoko, Diko, mm. D D um, is it Danny or Diko? Some of those big artists will be there as well okay. in the evening, just the light, lighting of the, um, freshen of the entertainment and closing of the ceremony. So on the 27th, I'm sure a lot of people will be out of town and uh, I'll find a way to run out as well. I'm arrest. <laughs> <laughs> thank you very much, yeah, Honorable Commissioner, for joining us on set this thank you. morning. You see, it's going to be uh, a heated period for us in Benin. So if you are around Benin City, or if you are not even in Benin City, it's time for you to make plans now to be in Benin from on the 21st through 25th, okay, to 26th of this month mm. for NAFEST Edo 2019. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you for Thank having us. Thank you. Thank you, sir.